it's good to see you here this morning as we continue on in our sermon series on Save to Serve. And today we're going to take a look at, we're going to start into the Acts of the Apostles. You know, we've looked several weeks with uh, Luke and the Gospel of Luke. And, and the kind of the second volume of that is the Acts of the Apostles. And we're going to continue on that in the first chapter today. And in the process, I'm going to do something that I have not done in 30 years of preaching. <laughs> and that is, this is the first sermon I've ever preached on the Ascension of Jesus. Uh, now, it's kind of crazy, isn't it? I mean, in the sense that, uh, you know, you'd think they'd be talked about before because it's in the Acts, I mean, it's in the uh, Apostles' Creed where it says, He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, from whence He shall come to judge the quick and the dead. And by the way, you're going to be reciting that here in a little bit. Uh, but uh, what happens a lot of times is we take a look at uh, Jesus speaking to the Apostles and, and this is your task and this is your mission to go out and you in the church to go out into all the world and to be my witnesses. And then what happens usually is we jump over all that other stuff that comes on and we go down to the second chapter of Acts where it talks about the giving of the Holy Spirit in the day of Pentecost. And we miss that little section where it talks about the ascension of Jesus. And what I wanted to do is I wanted to talk about that for a minute where it says that the apostles are there and he is, quote, taken up into heaven as it says in that first section. Uh, and, you know, who, who knows what that looked like? Who knows how uh, what it must have looked, but it was obviously something that, that it was transfixing the apostles. They were focused on him. They were looking to him as he ascended into heaven. And, and by the way, that's what they do through the rest of the Acts of the Apostles too. They look to him, and as they look to him, amazing things, wonderful things happen as the gospel is spread throughout the world. And so what I wanted to do this morning is uh, I was reminded as I was reading and thinking about this week, I was reminded of a little verse. You've got it in your, uh, in your uh, bulletin this morning. Take a look at just right under where the sermon title is. And you'll see it's from Psalm 34 and it says this. Look up to him and your faces will be radiant and you will not be put to shame. And I, I think that that's just, the, that's just the theme verse for the Acts of the Apostles, really. Before we take a look at that, let's pray, though. Lord, we give you thanks and praise for your grace and gifts here this morning, for the way that you love us and care about us, and your spirit you've sent to be present among us. Help us listen to the spirit this day. Open our hearts and minds to his truth as he speaks to us the words of life through these scripture passages and the things that we're going to say here and the songs that we're going to sing. Help us this day to look up to you we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So it says, you'll see that the first couple of verses that he was taken up into heaven. Uh, if you'll notice, it does not say what heaven is like. It doesn't give a description of it, anything like that. It just says that that's what he was taken up into. And, and you know, we get all kinds of ideas that we have about what heaven is like. Uh, sometimes if you're a little kid, you think that heaven is that big blue dome that's up above you, you know, uh, where these clouds are and the sunshine is and where the rain comes from. By the way, did it rain yesterday? Uh, oh, my. Uh, and, uh, and where, by the way, this time of the year, the tornadoes come from. Did you ever notice that? Uh, and that, that's where heaven is. And then maybe it's, no, no, maybe it's not that. Maybe it's that black darkness of space, that vast expanse out there beyond us. That is where the stars are and where the comets are and the planets are and the galaxies are and, uh, you know, the gas nebulas and things like that. The uh, it's, maybe it's that's where heaven is. No, 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 it's not there. In the Bible, heaven is a sign of a higher reality, a sign of a reality that is above and beyond us and that also encompasses and encircles us and all the worlds that there are. And it is a place where, well, it's beyond our comprehension, beyond our understanding, beyond our ability to penetrate into it and certainly to dominate it. It's, as the scripture is, the place where God dwells. And into that place, into the center of that mystery, Jesus was taken. We don't understand it. We just know he was there and he is there now. And so we think of all kinds of things. Uh, you know, uh, I, for instance, I was uh, talking to somebody a few days ago when they were talking about, I guess, what we need to do is now look up to heaven. Well, that depends upon how you understand heaven. Uh, for instance, sometimes I, I, over the past 30 years, as I've been talking to people, I've heard people say that heaven is kind of like this merciless mirror that's up above us that reflects back on us all our human frailties and afflictions and that reflects back on us all the wrongs that have been done to us and all the wrongs that we have done to other people and all our guilt and our shame and our fear and our doubt and our fate and even our death. 
and it's kind of like this dark cloud that's up above us, or probably more exactly like this coffin lid that's up above us, crushing down on us. But who would want to look up to that? Or sometimes people think of heaven as well. It's that place where that that whatever that thing God is, uh, that's that holy being that's up there. And he's kind of all ticked off about us because of all the wrongs that we've done. And he's kind of like this, well, kind of like this tyrant up there that's getting ready to zap us at any time. Who would want to look up to that? Or sometimes I've heard people talk about heaven is where there's a kind of an indifferent God that dwells. One that built this creation and created it and then kind of wound it up and then let it sit there and it's kind of running down over the years and he's up there somewhere and he's sitting under a shade tree, sipping a cool drink, taking it easy while he doesn't really care what goes on down here. Who would want to look up to that? Who's in heaven? Jesus. He's ascended into heaven. And who's Jesus? Well, he is the one who gave himself for us. He is the incarnate son of God. He is the one, the man in whom the love of God was at work. He is the one who suffered for us, taking upon us our doubts and our fears and our shames and our problems and our fate and even our death. So that Evil would not be a, a dark cloud that's over us, but would be something that's under our feet as we look to him. That's who's there. And how do we look to him? Well, we look to him when we let him be who he is in heaven. We look to him when we confess and believe that he was the one that gave himself up for us and cared for us, cares for us now even in heaven as he cared for us here on this earth and loved us and was for us, for you. That we are not our own, but we are His. His. And that He is there for us. And we can look to Him. And when we look to Him, we change. We change. As the scripture says there, look to him and your faces will be radiant, radiant. Your faces will shine. Yes, ordinary people in Yukon and Oklahoma City and Mustang, their faces will shine. Let me just give you an example or two of it. Uh, for instance, this afternoon, if you want to turn back to the Acts of the Apostles, in the New Testament and look at the 6th and 7th chapter of the Acts of the Apostles and it talks about the martyrdom of Stephen, the first martyr in the Christian church and it talks about how Stephen is at one point, he's talking to this hostile crowd and he says to this hostile crowd, he's talking about Jesus and it says that, Je that, Peter's, excuse me, that Stephen's face, quote, looked like an angel. An angel. It reflected the glory of God as he spoke about Jesus and looked up to him. And then a few moments later, it says he's taken by the council out to be executed, to be stoned to death, and there's a guy by the name of Saul that is holding the coat. We'll hear about Saul again. And as he's being executed, it says he looks up into heaven and he says, I see the glory of God and I see standing at the right hand of God, Jesus. That's who's in heaven. And his face is changed, even in the midst of his execution. Or maybe a little bit closer to home, maybe you like a story about that. Something that happened last weekend. You know, last weekend there were a number of people that are from our church about 16, 18 of them that, that went over to help in the Kairos uh, prison ministry that took place at Mabel Bassett Correctional Facility last weekend. And I was talking to one of the people that was on the inside uh, working with the women that were inmates there. And this is a thing where they go in and they, they tell them about Jesus and they reach out to them in Christian love and they include them in the Christian community over that period of that weekend. And I said to him, I said to her, did you see anything happen there? And she said, you know, the first thing she says is, 
I saw their faces change. We came in, and the faces of these 42 women were dark and unkept. And you could see their face change as the weekend progressed, as they looked up to the Lord, and as they experienced the love of the Christian community. Because you know, you can't hide that change. You can't put makeup on to cover that one up. It's going to be out there. And in the process, when we reflect that glory as we look up to him, we comfort and strengthen other people because other people see it in us. And they think, man, there must be something that's past all that I'm in right now out there that's waiting for me. And in the very nature of our faith, you, we know, I mean, we get so used to it, we don't see it. In the very nature of our face, even when we sigh and grumble, we bear witness to him as we look to him. You know, there's an interesting story. If you go back this afternoon and you read John's Gospel, the seventh chapter, it says that Jesus is one day and the tabern is in the temple of God and it's the festival of, tabernacle, of the tabernacle. And uh, at one point in that festival, what would happen was they would get a golden pitcher and they would go down to the temple of Siloam and they would dip that into the water there and they would take this little golden pitcher filled with water and they would bring it into the temple of God. And the purpose of that was to point back to that time when they were on the Exodus journey from slavery to the promised land and Moses was out there with them in the wilderness and he hits the rock and it breaks open and the rock breaks forth with water flowing out of it. And as that's happening, it says that Jesus stands up and he says this. Now listen to what he says. Out of the heart of the believer will come a river of living water. Out of your heart, a river of living water that will bless and comfort and strengthen and refresh other people. That's what we're called to do. Because, friend, the truth is, we are not in this world to comfort ourselves. We are in this world to comfort other people in his name. Look to him, and your face will change. And you will not be put to shame. You know, as I was trying to figure out how to explain that little last part there, that verse, uh, and you see it throughout the Acts of the Apostles, really. The many times that, you know, people assaulted the apostles or beat them or imprisoned them or executed them, and yet they triumphed over it all. And I was, I was thinking about uh, an experience. I'll bet you you've had this experience before. Have you ever had the experience where, where you're standing there and there's somebody on this side and they're talking to you and they're trying to say something to you about something that they're in and then on the other side there's somebody else and they're talking to you and they're trying to say something different to you about some other kind of topic and you're trying to listen to both of them and you can't quite get either one of them uh, and you get kind of confused and at one point you stop and say, wait, just a second, just a second, stop, stop, just stop for a second. I, I need to listen to this person. You ever had that happen? Maybe a few kids at the same time or something like that. That's the Christian life. On the one side, we have this going in our ear in a world of fear, a world to be afraid in. And why afraid? Look at the TV this afternoon. Look around you at the world. Look at our own lives and hearts. We're afraid that we'd be put to shame. We're afraid that somebody will look at our lives or something at our hopes and our desires and our accomplishments and they'll look at us and they'll judge us. Or God will judge us. Or worse, we'll judge ourselves and judge our lives as failure and loss. And we'll be put to shame. But wait, 
There is another voice. It's talking to us. And it says, look up to him. Look up to him. And when we look up to him, we remember that it is he who has redeemed us. It is he who preserves us in the Christian life. It is he who sends the Holy Spirit to comfort and strengthen us. And because of him, when we look to the Father, we will never be put to shame. Never. Does that sound like a better deal? Now I want to talk over just a second in conclusion about that little verse that I had read from uh, 2 Corinthians. It's worth reading a time or two. Because it says when we look up to him, there's something that's going to happen. We'll be transformed. We'll be transformed into the same image that is into the image of him. From one glory to another. And that will happen in your life. And that will be done by the Holy Spirit. So that you, when you look up to him, you will radiate his glory. And you will never be put to shame. Let's pray again. We praise you, Lord. We give you thanks that you are in heaven. They are making intercession for us. There for us as you were on earth for us. We give you thanks and praise. Help us to look to you. Help us to resist that voice of fear. But to listen to you, to listen to your spirit and look to you so that our faces can be changed and we can become people that comfort and strengthen others that are the kind of folks that you talked about. That a river of living water will flow from us to bless others. We give you thanks that as we look to you, you make us the children of our Father, and we will never be put to shame. It's in your name that we ask. Amen.